Is he done? Okay. Good morning. And welcome. I don't know if it's on. Welcome. Okay. Is it? Okay. I was checking to make sure I could hear myself. So good morning and welcome to uh, service here at Bethesda. It is good to be here. The weather is finally cooling off. And uh, it's a sign of things to come. So. Uh, one announcement, uh, funeral for Artist Fisher is Thursday here at the church. The service is at 1 o'clock with visitation beginning at noon. And we extend our sympathy and condolences to the family and friends of Artist Fisher. Uh, and we sing our opening hymn, Dearest Jesus at Your Word. our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayer of the day, let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and our failings. Give us grace to overcome them. Keep us from things, those things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Before I get to uh, the lessons, I'm just using two of them this morning. Um, this is the new normal, and uh, I've been through a couple of national disaster floods, and uh, I was told then that normal is only found on a washing machine dial, and uh, I think there's some, some real truth to that, but I've never forgotten that, and uh, um, it's uh, very, very true. The first reading I'm using is from Exodus 17th chapter, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out, to Egypt, out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the, strike the rock, and water will come from it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us? or not. 
And the gospel text is from Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 23 to 32. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? And Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you, can, if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by whose authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven or was it of human origin? They argued with one another, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for the crowd regards John as a prophet. So, Jesus and, so they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And the second answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of the father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of heaven ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of, the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes, prostitutes did believe him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and most gracious God, we thank you for the many ways you are with us all through strange and challenging times. But help us to remember that you are indeed with us to guide us, to comfort us, and to strengthen us, and to give us courage to continue on our journeys. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to commend those who, who built this stand. I was at uh, Parker's last month, Parker's Prayer last month, and the floor of the stand was here. So I was way above everybody. And it had a 10-foot had step ladder to get up to, to where I am, to where I had to preach from. The, the congregation and the pastors call it the deer stand. And uh, I think it was pretty, uh, pretty evident. It was, it, was, it was pretty high. But I also got to appreciate uh, the pastors who are continuing to do this kind of work with the, with the conditions that we have. Um, one of the things that I, that I really miss when I do pulpit supply is being able to see the faces of the people I'm preaching with. Because I don't know if, they, if, if they're laughing at the, at the stories I'm telling or if they're looking at the watches to see how, how soon he's going to be done. But uh, I, have, I have great regard for uh, the pastors and the congregations that uh, are, are uh, continuing to do um, what needs to be done. In, in bringing the message of, of uh, the gospel to people. One of the hardest things for me to do as a pastor is come up with sermon titles. And um, I would usually try and pick them early in the week, but I, when I would do that, I would often find that by the time I got the sermon done and the way I wanted to go with it, um, it didn't resemble quite what the title was. So I finally uh, came up with a title that uh, I, to I would tell my secretary when she said, I need a sermon title, and I didn't have one. I would simply say, the whole gospel for the whole world. But I do have a, a title for today's sermon, and that's simply, Questions and Choices. There are times we find ourselves in situations that uh, we did not plan, or even anticipate, or even ever have imagined. One of those times is now with the COVID thing. 
I've asked myself many times uh, during those times, uh, I mean, I ask questions a lot. I ask questions of myself. I ask, even ask questions of God or, or what's going on with everything. And there are times when I find myself in certain types of situations or a mess where I have felt lonely, I felt scared, I felt abandoned, or maybe threatened or uncertain about what's, what to do. And I say, usually quietly to God, I don't, don't, God, I don't think life is supposed to be like this. Why isn't life fair? Well, in, in my own naivete, there are times I think life is meant to be fair. I, did, I do what I'm supposed to do. I act how I think I'm supposed to act. I try to do things correctly, but still not the way it should be. When I've looked through scriptures to see if there's something at all in there, both Old Testament, New Testament, or all of the other books, about isn't life supposed to be fair? I've looked through all those scriptures and passages and I couldn't find anything like that. There's no statement about life always being fair. What is in scriptures is the promise that God, be, God will be with us in all things. One of the things I find myself with this uh, COVID thing is uh, it's, been a, it's been several months already that we've had to wear masks, but I find myself forgetting to put the mask on when I'm going out of the house and I'll, I'll get out on the street and I'll realize I don't have my mask and I have to go back home and get a mask. So we put signs on our doors that go out, mask, big red, big red letters. We put uh, mask, extra masks in the cars, cars if we forget. And I found that it helps me to get things done if I do a to-do list. And as I do the things on the list, I, I cross them off. But if I do something that isn't written on the list, I write it on a list and then I cross it off. Just a way of, of maybe affirming myself. I wash my hands a lot, do not touch my face, but it gets frustrating. In the reading from Exodus, we hear about the Israelites marching through the wilderness of sin, as it's called in, in Exodus, and they're angry. They're angry at Moses, they're angry at God. They accuse Moses of, and God of bringing them and their animals and children out in this wilderness to die. And in the reading this morning, we hear they were thirsty. They were desperate for water. It was a parched, a lonely, and a bewildered land, and they were scared. But in verse 6 of the reading this morning, God says, I will be, he says to Moses, I will be standing there in front of you at the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel, he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Water is interesting. We need it for life. But I was drinking a bottle, a bottle, uh, uh, from a bottle of bottled water the other day, and I looked on the side for the nu nutrition label. It's kind of interesting. Sodium, 0%. Protein, 0%. Carbohydrates, none. Potassium, none. Fat, 0%. Calcium, 0%. Sugars, 0%. Fiber, 0%. And calories, in big bold letters, none. That's the nutritional value of water. But it's also something that we need for life. If we don't have water, 
our bodies stop, to func stop functioning. If we don't have water after a few days, we'll die. In the reading this morning from Exodus, there's a God, God commands Moses to take the staff that he's had with him when he struck the rivers of the Nile. And we hear about the staff of Moses in Exodus earlier several times. When Moses is tending the, the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, he's a staff with him to ward off the enemies, the animals that are preying on the sheep. And was his first in, in, in his first encounter with, with Pharaoh, Moses has his staff, and the magicians of Egypt take what look like staffs and turn them into snakes. And God tells Moses to throw his staff on the, on the floor, and he does so, and his staff becomes a, a larger serpent and snake that devours the other Egyptian snakes. Moses uses the staff he was carrying to turn the Nile River red with blood, unsuitable and not drinkable. Moses used the staff to part the Red Sea to deliver the Israelites from Pharaoh's pursuing armies. And Moses also again used the staff to close the Red Sea over the armies of Pharaoh, of Pharaoh. And now in the text this morning, we hear of Moses again using his staff to bring water, life-giving water, from a rock. The staff of Moses became the presence of God, almost like a sacrament that uh, Moses carried with him and with all of his people. It was a reminder of the people and of Moses that even though God seemed far away and even though they, they were upset at God, God was present with them, leading them through the wilderness. For us as Christians and especially as Lutherans, we talk a lot about baptism. It's called the sacrament of belonging. It's water mixed combined with the word of God through Christ. We are washed with water and the word, and we are given a new name. We are washed with water and the word and given, our, given a new relationship with God in Christ. We are washed in the water and the word and made to be a child of God, a son or a daughter of Christ. In the gospel reading this morning, it takes place in Jerusalem during Holy Week. And during that time, Jesus stirred up a lot of things. He cleansed the temple. He did some miracles that uh, people really questioned and wondered, why is he doing this? But he tells a parable in the story of the two sons. The man had two sons and went to the first and asked him to go work in the vineyard. And the first son said he would, but then he didn't go. He went to the second one, and he said he would go, he, he would go but later he didn't. And the question is, which of the two did the work of the father? And they said the first one. The one who said at first he wouldn't go, but later did. We are called as sons and daughters of the king sons and daughters of God, to do the work in the vineyard, to proclaim to me people the message of God and the presence of God in the midst of COVID episodes, disasters, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes. That's what we're called to do. We're given the choice. Do we go or do we not go? The man in the parable asked his sons to go. The first one said no, but did. The second one said yes, but didn't. But it's God in Christ who asks us, as, in, as his sons and daughters, to go into the kingdom to proclaim the message of God's love and of God's presence in the midst 
of all the turmoil that was going on then and is going on now. We are called by Christ to go work in the world. What is your answer? Amen. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Gotta find my notes here. We now sing the hymn, Change My Heart. Thank you, Mark. <sighs> Living together in trust and faith, we confess our faith in words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'll pray the prayers of, prayers of the people of God, and at the end of each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and your respond is simply hear our prayer. Confident in the gracious and ever-widening mercy of God, let us pray for the world, the body of Christ, and for all who yearn for wholeness of life. Let us pray for the church, that it might proclaim boldly and with authority the coming of your kingdom to all people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who care for the gifts of creation which you have provided us, that their example may inspire us to renewed stewardship of natural resources for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the leaders of the world that they might strive to ensure that all have shelter, food, clothing, and medical care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who are suffering in spirit, mind, and body. We ask you to be with those who are sick. Grant your healing presence to them. We also ask that you be with those who are experiencing grief and loss. We ask you especially to be with the family and friends of Artis Fisher. Grant them, with, grant them your presence, your love, and your strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Help us pray for this assembly that we may listen to your teachings, trust them and serve others with self-giving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, O incarnate Savior, we place ourselves. Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let your comfort strengthen, your grace renew, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal, now and forever. Amen. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The closing hymn is, O Master, Let Me Walk With You, hymn number 818. the benediction. And now as you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for being here. Stay well. And Mark, thanks for be providing the music. <laughs>